What is up, Jags fans? Here we are on another episode of a Jaguars United live show. I'm super pumped that y'all are here today because although we're not going to break down the film like we usually do, we are going to talk all things Jags. So this is a fan interactive show. Make sure to get into the comments and make sure to uh, let me know what you guys think about uh, the Jags going forward. Uh, specifically today, we're going to be talking about Trent Baalke, uh, the Jaguars contract and salary cap situation. Uh, so we're going to get into all things future of the Jags. So let me know what you think in the comments. I try to get to all the comments if possible. Um, that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, make sure to follow the Twitter and the Instagram. Uh, I like to communicate with you guys through Twitter and Instagram. We like to, I like to talk with, uh, about Jags all the time. Not just when we do live shows Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. Glad that you are here if you are not subscribed please subscribe. Uh, you want to get the notifications when we do shows. Also, fun little thing, uh, we're going to be launching this episode on Spotify. This is going to be our first episode released as a podcast. So we've been to YouTube for a while, but uh, we're going to be on Spotify and all other po podcast platforms so that you can listen to it while you're doing other things, not on YouTube. Big shout out to Nolly Full Cab. First one in the chat, Nolly Full Cab is a channel member. So channel members on YouTube uh, get sweet benefits and perks like a specialized name badge and they can spam emojis and all those other things. But I'm glad that all of you guys are here. Um, I like to hit a lot of the comments. Cody Jackson is pumped to be here. DJM is pumped to be here. Uh, C Breacher comments, this is my type of stream. I love the off-season talk. I like off-season talk, but I like all talk, to be fair. So uh, anything that has to do with the Jags, I will watch. Um, DJM says, how did we get uh, killed, I'll censor him, by the Lions? Well, we're not a very good team, and that's what happens when you're not a very good team. Predator says, stream day is always a great day. Uh, Nolly says, will any of this affect the direction of our first-round pick this year? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, Stephen Gray in the comments says, great to catch a live show. Just a pity it's after that crap show. Duval from Ireland. Yeah. Um, glad that you're here, Stephen. I uh, appreciate you uh, being here from Ireland. I mean, I don't know what time it is in Ireland. We have a lot of people that listen and interact in England and in the UK, and uh, they always lament that uh, they can never watch the live shows on YouTube because they air – at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the east coast of Florida, and that's pretty much the middle of the night for them. So uh, they watch it on VOD, which the video always goes up on VOD, and now they can listen to the podcast. But uh, let's jump right into like the the the, the meat of the story, right? So uh, the Titans fire their GM right mid season. The Titans are a pretty decent team. They've made runs in the playoffs. Uh, they're like a team that has been very competitive uh, recently, and they fire their GM. Because of probably poor decisions. I mean, the A.J. Brown thing comes to mind. Firstly, drafting Malik Willis obviously wasn't a big, uh, a big move, like a move that the Titans brass was happy about. Um, so, obviously, there's some issues and friction there. Now that we do know the whole story, we don't. There's usually a lot more there than what we're told because they're professionals. A lot of times, but then Jason Lockenfora, who Jaguar fans love to hate, came out with a. A uh, new story that Trent Baalke's position could be changed next year. Like, still with the team, but maybe not as much organizational control as he's had in the past. And he even mentioned Doug Peterson getting a little bit of organizational control. And this was a tweet that he had. And a lot of people were always, like, not on Jason Lockenfora's side. 
but he did break, I think, some of the urban news, and he was kind of quick on that, so he kind of gained some respect after that. So, however, you, he also said the Jags were going to move to London by 2021 or something like that. So, take it with a grain of salt. Um, I don't know how Trent Baalke still has a job as a GM. The only thing I could think in my mind, and we've talked about this if you've watched the shows for a while, the only thing that I can imagine happened was he had a lot less control during the urban era than we thought, and urban had carte blanche decision to make moves, and Shad Khan wanted to give him a chance to be the guy who makes the picks and signs the free agents and whatever. So uh, the, a lot of people don't realize that GMs have a lot of like day-to-day duties, right? Um, you're always, you're constantly bouncing people off practice squads and signing people to short contracts and putting, you know, so there's a lot of like day-to-day things that happens that some people are good at. And I think Trent Baalke was decent at those things, but we think of GMs as the guy that signs the number one pick, uh, drafts the number one pick, signs the big free agent and things like that. So it's just hard to know if you did, if you don't know what's going on, who's in charge of what decisions, but it is safe to say that Balky's role should change because of the current situation that the Jags are in. And I do kind of want to show you the current situation that the Jags are in. Um, I don't know if this is big enough for you guys to see. Um, I'll try to circle things that are important to me. But uh, the biggest thing that comes to mind right off the bat is the estimated cap space uh, for next season is negative $24 million, Okay, So we're negative $24 million under the cap next year. So something has to give. Like someone's going to have to be cut. Um, they're not going to be able to be active players in free agency. They're going to have to fix this 24 million number. Now the good news is the cap is going up next year. Uh they're going it's going up to 220 million, I believe. So that's pretty that's pretty big. I think that's 12 million more than it was this year. And for those of you that don't know how the cap works, basically the collective bargaining agreement negotiated that the uh, players would get 48% of the revenue sharing profits. Now, other leagues like the NBA, uh, MLB are a little bit higher. I mean, they're upwards toward 49, right? And that 1% is a big deal when you're talking about billions of dollars that the NFL is bringing in. So currently, the NFL players get 48% of all of the revenue that comes in to the NFL. So, for example, in 2022, the revenue was $433 million total. So 48%. Uh, the 208. So that's where they're at there. And uh, they haven't given us a hard number yet for 2023, but most people think that 2023 is going to be around uh, $220 million for the cap. So that would give us $12 million more. And that still puts us uh, $12 million. I mean, we got some work to do, but uh, we got, we got solutions for sure. I'm going to try to get to some of these comments. If I miss them, I'm sorry. I do try to get to all the comments. Um, Timmy Devil 999 who I love hearing, uh, I love hearing his comments. He says, uh, defense needs to press charges on the Lions. Offense got bent over and rump roasted for three hours straight. Yeah, the defense was really concerning, and that's a conversation for another time. I'm not really getting into the X's and O's on this episode. Maybe I'll we'll throw in one this week, but uh, the the defense has definitely shifted from pr- beginning of the season. They were all cover one, man. Um, we call it cat defense, my cat versus your cat, right? Uh, and then when they didn't have the people to do it, then they moved into this soft zone, rush four, drop zone. And teams have figured it out and realized it, and they are now just just moving the ball on us at will. I mean, we haven't forced very many punts the last couple of weeks. Mike Caldwell is playing very conservative. I mean, we even saw against the Ravens that the Ravens moved the ball really well against us. Uh, the Jags just played a bend but don't break. They forced a couple turnovers. They forced a lot of field goals. And the offense was able to keep up, but the offense was not – able to keep up in this game and and that just happens oh nolly full cab has just become a channel member for 14 months so if you're listening on the podcast our youtube member for 14 straight months man that is over a year that's a year and two months thank you nolly nolly is one of the ogs he's the i love him i love the comments that he has uh thank you nolly seriously from the bottom of my heart thank you for being a member for 14 months and he Wants to comment bulky with the clown emojis. Can't blame him at all for that. Israel Otero 
is going to pile on in the comments and say, Balky traded three picks to draft a guy who got benched for a third round pick who has half of a sack less than the guy we drafted who started 13 games. So the draft picks are very concerning, and we're going to take a look at these. If you're watching the video, we're going to be looking at the drafts just because we're trying to kind of look at Balky and what he's done and how to and, and listen, I, I want to be fair. I'm not one of these guys that piles on. I'm not one of these guys that is just looking for a reason to get rid of anyone that we have, right? I'm I'm more of an optimist than a pessimist. Uh, I'm the last one to get on coaches and front office people, but it's not looking good early, right? When we see the redraft for 2022, Trevon Walker may not be in the first round. Now, I don't know, but he just he hasn't shown much. Uh, is he playing out of position? Perhaps, but I would like to think if you drafted the guy number one overall, playing into your defensive line or a defensive end and an even front or an outside linebacker and an odd front, I feel like your production shouldn't drop off too, too much if you are the number one overall pick. So for Trevon Walker, I mean, we all knew he was going to be a project player, but it's not looking like Cardiac Cats has become a, a member. Oh, thank you, Cardiac. Bro, I appreciate Man, this is awesome. Thank you, guys. And he's on the Trevor Lawrence level. Thank you, Cardiac Cats. I appreciate it. Um, man, I love it. Uh, but, yeah, back to, you know, Trevon Walker just being, uh, you know, not it right now. Not it. Um, hope to be wrong. Hopefully he kind of turns a corner here. Now, I would love nothing more than to see Trevon Walker pop off the last quarter of the season and uh, really just kind of solidify himself as at least a player that we can have some some optimism for. Is it, I mean, is it fair? He's not really getting much help. But no, again, going back to that number one overall pick, you got to be a stud. I mean, even guys like Aiden Hutchinson, Kayvon Thibodeau, even, you know, Jermaine Johnson even. They're flashing. So, yeah. Uh, Jacob Perry, who's a channel member, says, "What's up, Jags United?" Uh, not much, Jacob. Um, you know, you know, today was a uh, a nice day for me. Uh, had had a nice long day, but I was able to work on this video uh, earlier, so I'm all ready for our contract talk. Thank you, Jacob, for asking. Cardiac Cat says, "Thanks for all the hard work." Cardiac, thank you for being a channel member. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, Israel Otero in the comments is going to say you can't draft the project at number one. We should have drafted Hutchinson. Moon Illusion says Walker is a decent run stopper currently. Uh, guy just bull rushes every snap. Also, what's up with Devin Lloyd? Second pick, Devin Lloyd. Not looking good. But there are people, and I listen to people talk that have played in the league, and they do talk about this rookie wall. Now, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for anybody, but if you talk... Two people who've played the game. I've never played the game. I'll admit that. Uh, they say there is a rookie wall, and it's about now. So is there a chance guys like Trevon Walker and Devin Lloyd? I mean, think about it. They're coming from college, where in the college season, like their season's like wrapping up. Like this is the end of the college football season. Um, if your team was good, you have maybe one more game. Uh, you actually only have one more game unless you're a top four team. You potentially could have two more games. But regardless, this is the end of your college season. And in the NFL, we still have a lot of games to go, have to go. So there, this rookie wall makes sense that it's now. Um, both, I mean, Devin Lloyd wasn't really a project player, but, you know, it's hard for rookies to come in overall. So the first two picks, you got to give Balky a pretty bad grade. Like if we're lumping both of these together right now, you're looking at probably a C minus, and that's that's just because of potential, and and what could happen. So then, if we if we look at the rest of the draft, um, it gets a little interesting. Luke Fortner, great pick. I mean, he's doing good, and nothing bad to say about Luke Fortner. Um, great, great pick there. Chad Muma, I like the Chad Muma pick, I do. But it's just weird that you drafted Chad Muma and Devin Lloyd and signed a Luicon. So you're gonna see that in a couple of minutes, we're gonna pull up the cap numbers. We're in some cap problems, boys. We got some cap issues, and one of the reasons is because of Aluakon's contract is so big. And I like Aluakon, good player, one of the best players on our team. But you drafted two players that could fill his role. And in a league that's moving to two linebackers, 
um, and, and increased safeties and increased nickel corners and increased edge rushers. Chad Muma is kind of this, him and Devin Lloyd are kind of the same guy. If we move down to Snoop Connor, um, this pick baffled me. I don't really know what happened here because he was the backup running back at Ole Miss. I mean, he had one carry for six yards. I mean, your starting running back is injured. And Snoop Connor's still not seeing the field. It's running back as a position that has become incredibly devalued. Incredibly devalued. Now, I like running backs. I think running backs are integral, but increasingly devalued. Fifth round, not even going to play. Not even a passing down back or whatever. This is the pick right here that just really gets me. Um, he's not even as good as, as and this says round two, but this is not correct. This is round seven. Monteric Brown has played a lot more than Greg Jr. has. This pick really surprised me. We Remember, we watched the film on Wachita Baptist. It was hard to get film. Greg Jr. wasn't that impressive. Very surprised on that pick. Um, not a great pick here either. So, so far, the only good pick, he, I mean, look, Draft Network gave them an A-. That's why looking at these draft grades is, is incredibly pointless, for sure. Uh, let me get some of these comments here in the chat. Uh, ben Haney says, we could have drafted Christian Watson in the second round. It is, okay, listen, I'm not, I, I will admit, it's easy to go back and cherry pick players that you could have picked. I mean, we were looking at all sorts of drafts and the players we could have gotten. Yeah, we could have gotten Lamar Jackson instead of Taven Bryan. Yeah, we could have gotten, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on, you know, but it, the second round and later, like, yeah, you should do better. It's the first round picks that I'm really grading you on. If you get two first round picks, I mean they better be home runs. Timmy Devil 999 in the comments says, if you think we didn't need linebackers, I don't know what to say to you. We only had a Luacon and Shaq Quarterman and some other lame at linebacker before the draft. It's the linebackers, coach. Now we definitely had a need at linebacker, but I don't think we needed to spend two of our top four picks on linebacker. I don't think the need was that big. I mean, we had our starting strong side backer. And if you're going to, and listen, if you want to go move up and trade picks to get an off ball, uh, weak side linebacker like Devin Lloyd, by all means, go do it. But then don't do that. And then also use an incredible value, incredibly valuable pick on a guy who has yet to shown that he can play. I mean, he hasn't really played the box safety role that I thought that he would be brought in here to play. Um, they're, they're opting for Wingard in that situation instead. And you know, it's, it's mainly because Devin Lloyd can't stay on the field. So maybe they did draft Muma to be the Andrew Wingard replacement for when they play these teams like the Lions and the Ravens and the Texans that like to run the ball. Uh, you bring in a guy like Muma as well who can kind of play that hybrid cover the linebacker, play in the box against the run, set the edge, fill the gap, whatever you need him to do. But Lloyd has just been the issue. So I guess it's I guess maybe you're right, uh, Timmy. Maybe I should wait and see until uh, if they can get them all on the field at the same time. Joseph Drawbone says, with Walker's issues, is it better to draft a stud off a mediocre team like FSU than a stud off of a great defense than Georgia? But the problem was is um, that's a great question. I think the stud on the mediocre team would probably have more upside. And here's the problem is that. Um, and I don't know if this is what you meant, but Trevon Walker wasn't a stud at Georgia. I mean, I don't think he was even top four in tackles. You know, you know guys like uh, the outside linebacker, I forgot his name, that go in, this, in the second round, the late first round. I mean, they had other guys that were more productive. Uh, Josh Allen, or I'm sorry, Trevon Walker was a project player. What do they do with Josh Allen? Well, okay, that's a good question, Cornbread. Let's, uh, let's parlay that question into the salary cap situation. All right. So let's take a look at the salary cap. Like we said, 24 million. Um, Cam, this is for next season. Uh, if you can't see it or you're listening to the podcast, we're looking at the contracts right now. And Cam Robinson, with a base salary of 16 million, with a $5 million signing bonus, is 10 over 10% of our cap is on Cam Robinson. And I know people are mad about Cam Robinson because he gave up the uh, sack that led to the potential Trevor injury. I don't think it's fair to judge him off of that one play. 
But that being said, I still think Cam Robinson has not lived up to this contract. I don't think he was worth the money. If you remember me talking, and I wanted uh, to not sign Cam Robinson. I wanted to draft Evan Neal. Um, and Evan Neal hasn't been as good as I thought he was going to be. But I didn't want to, to tie up so much of our cap in Cam Robinson. And I get the sentiment that you need a, a reliable left tackle. And left tackles are hard to find. And you either have a left tackle or you don't. There's no such thing as having a tweener. So I get the thought behind Cam Robinson, but paying him that much money, I mean, man. Like the Christian Kirk signing, that makes sense. Like you pay Christian Kirk less on a base level salary than you did Cam Robinson. A lot of people don't realize that. Christian Kirk's base salary is $15.5 million. Cam Robinson's base salary is $16 million. Cam Robinson has a $750,000 roster bonus. Christian Kirk only has a $500,000 roster bonus. They've invested more into Cam Robinson than Christian Kirk. Brandon Sheriff has got, got pretty good money. And just to kind of explain to people what dead cap is, and, and I don't really have... Here's the thing about salary caps, is I don't really have time in one show to explain it all because, A, I don't really understand it all. But it's kind of complicated. So here's the explain like I'm five version of dead cap and cap hit. So essentially what changes between the dead cap and the cap hit is the signing bonus, right? Teams are smart and they know that the salary cap is going to increase every year. I mean, I think it's only decreased one year and it's because of COVID. It increases every year. So a smart GM will try to backload the money because the money is basically Weaker money when the cap is larger. So the buying power of the money is stronger earlier in the contract, if you follow me. So they'll try to backload these contracts for the players. Now, for the players, uh, the backloaded contracts aren't beneficial to them. They, If they have the power, they're going to take the front-loaded contracts because that guarantees them the money, and that gives them the money earlier. So what the teams do to incentivize these players is they give them signing bonuses. We all know what signing bonuses are. So, for example, we're looking at Cam Robinson and Christian Kirk's signing bonus, and they're at $5 million each. Brandon Sheriff's actually at $5 million, too. So all three of these players have a $5 million signing bonus. So this signing bonus can actually be spread out over the length of the contract against the cap. But the player gets it up front. Okay, so the $5 million for Cam Robinson, he gets $5 million check from the Jaguars right up front. But on the books that the Jaguars have to turn into the NFL, they can take that $5 million and they can spread it out over the contract of Cam Robinson. So if it's if it's four years, that's $5 million divided by four or whatever it is. So that's the difference between a cap hit and dead cap. Okay, Dead cap can also be money that you owe a player uh, that's no longer on the team. And so if they go to another team, that dead cap counts toward you. So basically the goal when you're a free agent and you're cutting people for um, for cap reasons is you want to find a big difference between cap hit and dead cap. So that's what we're going to try to do here. There are some situations where the player is valuable, so you, you don't really want to do that. Uh, but if the player is not valuable and there's a big difference, then you want to cut them. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm not going to spend much more time explaining it, mainly, again, because I don't really... The workout bonus and all that it can get spread out, too. So, uh, Timmy Devil 999 in the chat says, I'm agreeing with that, with agreeing with another commenter. I'm just saying that we needed no matter that draft round. Okay. Um, if they was running a 4-3, I would understand, says Cody Jackson. C. Breacher says, us handing out all these big contracts came back to bite us in the... The butt. And he used a peach instead of a butt. So he probably meant something else. All right, so here's what we can do here. I love Spotrack because we can take a look at this. All right, so if I'm bulky, here's what I'm doing, okay? So um, let's first of all, this is 2023. So if we look at the players that are not being signed back, we have to keep this in consideration. These guys are contracts up. They're not being re-signed. That's Evan Ingram, Marvin Jones, Dwan Smoot, Chris Manhurts, Arden Key, Juwan Taylor, C.J. Beathard, Dan Arnold, Andrew Wingard, Adam Gotsis, Trey Herndon, Jamichael Hasty, kicker Riley Patterson, Corey Peters, Blake Hance, Darrell Henderson Jr., and Brandon Murphy. So those are all the players that are not on the team, and this team is still $24 million over the cap. Okay? Not good. Not good. So what do we do? Uh, let's take a look at some of these contracts that 
we have the cap figure. If we look back at this one, we can see the cap hit and the dead cap, right? So if we filter by dead cap, we start to see the players that we owe money to. If we filter by cap hit, we start to see who gets the money, okay? So let's just take this on the surface level. Who are we paying the most money to? Number one, Cam Robinson. I'm honestly not... I have a lot of problems with this. And I could get on Balky a lot for this pick. Because, again, this is a pick that I did not want. This is a pick I did not want the Jags to do. I did not want Cam Robinson to keep him. Regardless, he's on the team. It is what it is. At least we have a left tackle that... We can count on, kind of. So I'll give I'll give him that. Christian Kirk, you got to keep. He's one of your best players. You just signed him. No no issue there. Brandon Sheriff, again. Foisady Alukin, another guy. Aluakon, however you want to say it. So, but if you really look at it, I mean, these four players are taking up almost, we'll say, we'll say almost 40% of your cap. Okay? Almost 40%. 40% of your cap. And these four players. Now, this is not like this is not. I think it's. I think it's like thirty-seven percent. This is not like untypical, right? A lot of teams will have their best players being paid, but forty percent of your cap is going to Cam Robinson, Christian Kirk, Brandon Sheriff, and Foisady Lucan. Now, keep in mind. Now, I'm fair, boys. Next year, this when the cap goes up to two hundred and twenty million, this number will go down to about thirty percent. Okay, thirty percent. So looks not as bad, and and to be fair, you're getting a lot out of Kirk Sheriff and Aluakon, but you're you're really there. All right, so then we're moving into Shaq Griffin, who is getting eleven million dollars, eleven and a half million dollars base salary. Um, his four million dollars again was spread out over his the length of his contract. So that basically what happens is. Uh, the formula for dead money is the total money that you've paid him already. So if you're like, if you're looking to cut him like into his third year, um, like Shaq Griffin, the money that you've paid him already, plus his guaranteed money, which in this case I can't see it here, but I think it was around almost twenty million. No, it wasn't seventeen and a half. But then you subtract his cap hit. Okay, so you've paid him. Oh, so he had a big, the roster bonus, 1500 Okay, so basically your dead money formula is total paid plus guaranteed money minus the cap hit, and that gives you this number here, uh, your dead cap. All right, so without a question, no doubt about it, Shaq Griffin, his contract's gone. All right, so we'll find him on our list here. Um, did I already cut him? Shaq Griffin right here, released. Okay, so by releasing Shaq Griffin, we have saved 13 and a half million dollars this brings our cap space to negative 10 five okay so we're getting there we're getting there all right so that's that's got to happen Shaq Griffin has to be cut um it's part of it Timmy Devil says Shaq Griffin should be sued for his production on the field and pay he robbed the Jags so that's the problem in free agency is that's going to happen. I mean, it's not the first time the Jags have been robbed by a free agent, and it won't be the last. Ben Haney in the comments says, Walker Little is essentially a wasted pick. Yeah. I do think Urban had a lot more to do with those picks than Balky did, but Balky probably had a little bit of a say. Predator in the comments says, For real, I still lose sleep over the Robertson, Harris, and Jenkins contracts. Maybe not terrible signings, but terrible contracts. They got to go as soon as we get money back. So that leads me to Roy Robertson Harris. So we look at his contract here. Um, his contract's not looking good. Not looking good. Here, a $7 million base salary a year, uh, $2.3 million signing bonus, and he has a $400,000 roster and workout bonus. It's almost a million dollars if he makes the team. So his dead cap, and look, this is kind of where I wanted to kind of talk about, is what you want to look for is the is the big difference in dead cap and cap hit. Because that's where you're basically saving the money is dead cap and cap hit, right? So if we look at Shaq Griffin, huge difference here. $4 million in dead cap, 17.5 cap hit. So basically, if you keep him on the roster, you have to pay him $17.5 million. If you cut him, you pay him $4 million. So this is a big difference. So the big question is, can I replace this cornerback for the difference in this right here? Okay, so we looked at the 12, whatever it was, 12 million. 
Um, can you replace him with that 11 and a half, 12 million dollars? And the answer is yes, absolutely, you can. So you look at Rayshon Jenkins at safety. Can you replace this safety for this 6.8 million dollar difference? And the answer is yes, you could get you another Rayshon Jenkins for the exact same price by cutting him. So we're going to cut Rayshon Jenkins. I know people like him. And look, there, you, we could restructure Rayshon, right? This even gives us the opportunity to. Uh, change his salary to base salary. There's a chance that we restructure Rayshon to base salary, um, but for the sake of this show, we're cutting him and we're saving $6.25 million. So now we're only $4 million in the hole here. All right. Uh, Nolly Full Cab in the comments says, Shaq Griffin gave up when his brother was cut as a UCF guy. It makes me sad. I was a big fan of Shaq Griffin's when we signed him. I was a big fan of his brothers out of UCF, but he, there's no getting around the fact that he has not been good here. I mean, he even had opportunities in the urban era for interceptions and like dropped them all. So it is what it is. Moon Illusions in the comments says Seahawks fans warned us when we signed him. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right. So we'll take a look at our, let's keep looking at our contracts here. Um, Fatu Kasi is a guy who doesn't look, he doesn't have a, he's good injured, but see his difference here. This, this $3 million difference. It's, it's almost $2 million difference here between his dead cap and his cap hit. Fatu Kasi's dead cap is 15 million. His cap hit is 13 million. So cutting him really doesn't save us that much money. So I think we, we keep him. Darius Williams is another guy who I don't think has lived up to his contract. I mean, $11 million, that's a lot of money. But the way they structured his contract was he's getting almost all of his money guaranteed next year. Okay, so two-year deal, basically. We didn't pay him much this year. Um, if we cut him, we only save $500,000. So no reason to cut Darius Williams. I know people aren't happy with the way he's played. They want to see more production out of him. But a $500,000 savings is not worth it cutting Darius Williams, put him out there for whatever. Calvin Ridley, this contract's interesting. We'll see what happens here. He has to play. So I don't really want to talk about this too much, but if Calvin Ridley is the Calvin Ridley of old for $11 million, this is a bargain, but this is his last year of his contract. So we're either having to pay him or we're renting him for a year. Josh Allen, another guy who look at the difference. You know, we can pick up his option. We don't really save money by cutting him. The thing with Josh Allen that comes into play is could we trade him, right? Could we trade him for a what what could he go for? Maybe a maybe a fourth, and that's being nice. Is he worth a fourth? I think you let him play out next year, because I think next year the Jags do have a chance of making a run for the AFC South. I think there's no reason to trade Josh Allen until you get unless you're at the trade deadline. And um, you you have to you know dump people because you're not going to make the playoffs. Uh, Roy Robertson Harris, I think we or Ray Sean we cut already. Did we cut Ray Sean and Roy Robertson Harris? Who did we cut so far? Bring him back my other tab. So we've cut Shaq and Ray Sean. So we're going to cut Roy Robertson Harris. Let's take a look at his contract. Um, Seven million dollars a year, and look at this. Huge difference. Dead cap, 2.3 million. Cap hit, 10 million. That's a big difference there. Um, RRH, like the guy, great guy. Hasn't lived up to the money. We cut him. We save $7.8 million. So by just releasing Shaq Griffin, Rayshon Jenkins, and Roy Robertson Harris, we are now $3.5 million in the green. Now, keep in mind, we still have to sign all of our draft picks for 2023, so we're going to need a little bit more wiggle room than that, and then that would be just the draft picks, no free agents. So we probably want to clear a little bit more room if possible. All right. Um, C Breacher in the comments says, I think we could get a late third for Josh Allen. Maybe. Probably not, but Maybe. Nolly full cap. Do we really have a chance to win the AFC South next year with all these holes on the roster? I mean, I think you're expecting guys to make that next step. Uh, you're expecting guys like Andre Cisco, Devin Lloyd, Chad Muma, Trevon Walker, Luke Fortner. I and mean, you're looking for these guys to take that next step. And if they do, then you're replacing the holes with a solidified roster spot in all those positions I just named. 
not to mention Calvin Ridley could be huge. Uh, another, you know, just another season of Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson working together. Uh, sea Breacher in the comments says, "Thank you, Jags United. You put a smile on my face when the Jags don't." Sea Breacher, you put a smile on my face as well. It goes both ways, and I'm glad you're here. The Great Mistake Bozos in the comments says, if you were a GM, would you rather take our job or the Titans' job? That is a great question, Great Mistake Bozos, and I like to reflect that question back to the chat. So if you're in the chat right here, uh, make sure that you a answer that. I want to hear, would you rather have, if you're a GM and you're getting offered both the Jags and the Titans job, which job do you take? Uh, I'd love to hear your responses in the chat. If you're listening to this on our new podcast platform on Spotify, you're missing out on the live show. So if you're awake at 9 p.m., whether you live here or not, uh, get into the comments and let us know what you think. Titans or Jags, I think I would take the Jags job. Um, me personally, being born in Jacksonville and a Jags fan, but if we were to remove that, which I think is that to the spirit of your question, I still think I take the Jags job because I think Trevor Lawrence has is a generational talent, no homer, um, versus Ryan Tannehill and Malik Willis. That's a, that's a not a good situation. Your team's only as good as your quarterback, and that's been proven time and time again. Trevor's going to be the better quarterback, and I would have no problem cutting these people. Shay, who's a channel member in the YouTube chat, says he came in late, but love the detailed analysis. But are you using the cap increase for next year? So, Shay, great question. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. The cap increase is going up from 208, they think, to 220. And Spotrack here, the site we're using, actually accounts for that. So when we see $3.5 million cap space um, after cutting, uh, releasing, I like the word release better, after releasing Shaq Griffin, Rayshon Jenkins, and RRH, then yes, this $3.5 million, $3 million in the green is relative to the $220 million cap. To answer your question, so yes. Cornbread answers in the chat answers the question of Jags versus Titans. Says Jags because of Trevor Lawrence. Moon Illusion says Jags because Tannehill and Henry aren't long-term guys. Gerald says I take the Jags job. They'd probably overpay for that too. <laughs> nice one, Gerald. Nice one. Toxic FPV says as a Lions fan, I have to say T Law is going to be huge for your team. And listen, as a Jags fan, I got nothing but respect for the Lions fans because there's few franchises that can understand um, the depths of despair that each other have been through besides the Jags and the, uh, and the Lions. I have a great buddy who's a Lions fan, and he tells me consistently that I have no clue what it's like. So I'm not going to act like that it's equal because my buddy tells me that the Lions have suffered a lot. So I'm rooting for you guys. Uh, not last week. And, and listen, I said on the show, Toxic, our last show was the Jags-Lions breakdown. I'm usually pretty big on the Jags. I'm an optimist. I was not big on the Jags last week. I, I thought the Lions game plan and game style was exactly what kills the Jags. Um, it's, it's the bend, but don't break, take what the defense gives you move the ball. I mean, we were looking at, we were trying to find highlight plays of the, t of the, uh, lions. Like, so I was looking up all their touchdowns and they're like one yard touchdown run, two yard touchdown run, one yard touchdown run, one yard touchdown pass. Cause the lions just systematically move the ball down the field until they get to like the two yard line. Then they score. I, I love that defense. UCF Jaguar in the chat. UCF Jaguar. Look, thank you for being here. Uh, he had a great show on Sunday. Says, is it too early to hate our 2022 draft? I like Mooma. But no, not too early. Uh, not too early. Yeah, this is the party. This is what we're here. Uh, the Great Mistake Bozos in the comments says, I don't think we have that many holes. It's more of just good players not playing well. I like that. All right, so let's take a look at the salary. Let's see how much more we can shed any more room. Now, I, this is not going to be popular coming up, and, I, and I, it's okay. Uh, but Trevor Lawrence, obviously, his contract is is we're not touching that. Zay Jones is a guy again. Look, a lot of people want to get rid of Zay Jones, and they think he's a guy that maybe we don't need going forward. But again, look at this: this ten million dollar dead cap and this nine point eight million dollar cap room. We're not saving that much money by cutting him. He's much much more valuable the way his contract was set up to stay on the team next year. So Zay Jones probably gonna be on the team next year. Trevon Walker rookie contract can't touch that. Here's the one, boys. 
here's the one y'all are not going to like. I know we got Jamal Agnew fans in here. I know we do. I know y'all love him. I love him. It was just a, he had a, a recent he had a, a, a uh, Instagram comment where he he said I wish I had more touches and he kind of went on the offensive for wanting the ball more. And to be fair, I hope the Jags give him the ball more in the next couple games. I really do. I want to see what we can get. But the bottom line is, as much as I love Josh Agnew, look at what look at what this release does to our to our contract. $4.7 million release or saved if we release Agnew. And now we're $8.2 million in the green. So for those of you listening and not watching on the podcast, to recap, by releasing Shaq Griffin, Rayshon Jenkins, Roy Robertson Harris, and Jamal Agnew, we're $8.2 million in the green. So that's probably realistically what may happen. Now, I can't even begin to formulate situations where we restructure these contracts. Does a guy like Rayshon or Roy Robertson Harris re, uh, restructure their contract? Maybe. I can't see Shaq Griffin doing it just because the difference in what his restructure would have to be and what he's getting paid just to be released is, is massive. I mean, Shaq Griffin could literally sit on his butt and collect money for the next couple of years and, and be doing really well, doing nothing. Agnew is a guy I think could hit the open market and get a couple million. So I don't think he restructures. But listen, that's that's only four releases there. That's only four, three starters and a gadget guy. Um, and, and you're you're basically where you need to be to get your draft picks signed and maybe bring in some low level marginal functioning depth players. Nolly Fullcap says Agni will be great on the bench in Carolina or for the Jets. <laughs> oh man. Uh Sea Breacher says, Who's who are the last good fourth round picks? I can't remember. Who are the last good fourth round picks? God, I have to think about that for a second. Uh Timmy Devil says, No thanks. Keep Agnew at cost. Use him more. Jaggernaut says, Jags United, what is up? Going to be rough to get our roster in shape and balance our books. So good news is Jaggernaut and, and Raiden Shogum. Hello. Pokey says hello. Uh, the good news is, is the cap is going up. Shay mentioned it in the comments. The cap's going up to $220 million. So not as bad as it could have been, but yeah, I think these four uh, are probably going to have to go. Um, all right, let's, so let's move down the move down the roster a little bit here. Uh, we got rid of Agnew. Oh, this one's easy. Oh, this one's easy. This is an easy cut right here. Kalevon, see ya, bud. I mean, we don't even need to talk about that, right? We'll find his contract. That only saves you. That saves you two point five million. See ya, Kalevon. Yeah, my boy. I love you. I wish you the best. I think you're a great person, and I think you're a great athlete. You're an amazing athlete. Your LSU film is some of the most. Ath I mean, you you look like what was his name that came out of Clemson. Um, the linebacker. I mean, it was just incredibly, uh, was Isaiah uh, uh, Simmons or something like that. Insanely athletic. Just didn't work out. 2.5 million. Easy on the books. All right. Uh, so we've gotten rid of uh, Clavon. Etienne a, is a, you got to keep Etienne around. Again, not not really saving anything, cutting him, and, and he, he helps if he doesn't fumble. Devin Lloyd's rookie deal. Shatley, you can't get. Can we just take a moment? And I hate that I took 45 minutes to think of this, but Tyler Shatley getting the Walker Payton, Walter Payton Player of the Year nominee. I don't think we talk enough about off the field stuff and character. I try not to make things personal with these guys. Um, uh, most of them are great people, uh, great athletes. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. I mean, the NFL is a very niche business where some people, sometimes people are just insanely athletic and insanely good people. It just doesn't work out. And that's, that's life. Um, it is what it is. Tyler Shadley is one of those guys, is an insanely good person, insanely athletic, and it's worked out for him. He's the longest tenured Jaguar. He's getting Walter Payton, Man of the Year nominees. Can't say enough good things about T Shat 69. Logan Cook is a, is a Pro Bowl punter. Tyson Campbell is a Pro Bowl corner. Walker Little is a bum, but you don't, again, you don't save much cutting him. I mean, you're saving. $500,000 to your cap. I think you're better off keeping him as a swing. Devon Hamilton is an interesting look here, right? So Devon Hamilton, if we just take a look at what happens if we do cut Devon Hamilton, I know there's some big Devon Hamilton fans in the chat here. 
Um, but let's take a look at cutting Devon Hamilton. That saves you 1.2 million. Now, can you replace Devon Hamilton for 1.2 million? The answer is probably no. But can you sign a guy in the third round to replace him? The front office may say differently. I, I don't know. I think just for the sake of this, I'm gonna cut him. And I know people don't like I know people don't like that, but I'm gonna cut him. Because I wanna I want that 1.2 million. That's gonna give me some that's gonna allow me to sign a couple draft picks in the late rounds, which will allow me to use some of the money like Agnew and Chase on on, on a free agent. So I personally, I'm gonna cut him. But I wish the best to him as well. Ben Haney in the chat says, over under that shot will just promote Balky's assistant to GM. Is it is it Wa or 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 Woe or what uh, is the guy who came over from San Francisco? Tallahassee in the chat says, It's sad to see Lloyd play so bad after that good start. I'm hoping Lloyd just hit the rookie wall. Like I talked about earlier in the show, I'm hoping Lloyd hit the rookie wall. Legend in the chat says, Walker Little will probably take over at right tackle for Juwan next year. That's a good point. I don't think we can re-sign Juwan Taylor. I don't think we have the cap room. I would love to sign Juwan Taylor. I think he's been better than Cam Robinson. I'll be completely transparent about that. But the team already invested in Cam Robinson, so unless they're going to trade him, they chose. They they chose, you know, they chose to pick Cam Robinson over Juwan Taylor. I know the left tackle is more important, so I get it. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at what else we got going on here. Um, Cisco, love Cisco. I think he's a guy that takes the step next year. I think he takes the step. I really like what I see out of him. I really do. And I've talked about him a lot on my other shows. Love Andre Cisco. I know you guys too, do too. Um, we're expecting big things out of him. I really wish Urban would have played him more. Like, that's really frustrating. Gosh, man. There's Imagine where he would be now if he had gotten like every rep last year. Fortner happy with him. Muma happy with him. You start to get into some of these like lower end guys, and like, yeah, a lot of these guys will get cut, but it's gonna be marginal as far as how much it like helps the team. So I can tell you like right off the bat, if I'm GM, I'm cutting Shaq and Jordan Smith, like no questions asked. Um, as much as I love these guys, so if we go here, uh, we're cutting Shaq. That saves you a million dollars if you cut Shaq Quarterman. Um, I'm cutting. Um, Jordan Smith, and I like Jordan Smith. I don't know what the deal is with him. I don't know if he just hasn't been healthy, but I mean, he was a guy that was that started out at Florida University of Florida, transferred to UAB, and really stood out. And I know a lot of people will think like, "Hey, like, well, Jordan Smith, of course he went from Florida to UAB. Of course he like played better there." But to be honest with you, Jordan Smith was a three star that went to Florida, and then at UAB he's still a three star. And UAB, Alabama, Birmingham, they consistently get three stars. So it wasn't like he was this like amazingly rated player coming in and playing with a bunch of JV kids. Like he was rated coming out of high school just as good as these guys he played with, and he dominated at UAB. Don't know what the deal is with there. Sometimes again, it just doesn't work out. Cut Jordan Smith. Uh, you save seven hundred fifty-five thousand dollars, which again is not a lot. But you know, at him being twenty-five years old. You know, his contract does go until 2025, so you could extend that. This is the guy that, like, maybe, I don't know, but, you know, whatever. I don't know how y'all are going to feel about this one, but I'm cutting Daniel Thomas, too. Daniel Thomas saves you a million dollars. Again, the question is, is can you replace the player for the money you're saving? And Daniel Thomas had one of the lowest PFF grades on the entire team last week. Any chance he's given to play, he's not really producing. I like Daniel Thomas as a person, but... His contract's up in 2024, so I think he's a guy that gets cut. All right, so um, let's see. Anyone else? I mean, Willie Johnson, I mean, he's probably getting cut. I mean, he saves you $870,000. Y'all don't even know who he is. doesn't matter. Kendrick Pryor's getting cut. Saves you $870,000. We'll just end the cuts there. Um, yeah, we'll end the cuts there. So we've released 11 people, for those of you that are listening and not watching. And I'll list them off in, in order of, of most money saved by releasing them to least money saved. Okay, so first of all, you have Shaq Griffin at $13.5 million. I mean, that is money you need. Sorry, buddy. Then you got Roy Robertson Harris and Ray Sean Jenkins that are both saving you around $7 million. Roy Robertson Harris is upward toward eight. Um, Jenkins is closer to six. Then you got uh, Jamal Agnew that's saving you almost $5 million in cutting him. 
Then you kind of get into some nuanced players like Kalevon Chazon, Devon Hamilton, Shaq Quarterman, and they're, uh, Daniel Thomas, and they're saving you over a million in those releases there. Uh, some of the smaller guys, Jordan Smith, Willie Johnson, Kendrick Pryor, they're saving you $870,000-ish. So now we've created, by those 11 releases, we've created $16.5 million in the green in cap space. So assuming you spend eight to nine of it on your draft picks, you're now left with seven to eight million dollars in free agency. So go get you a couple people to fill in. Again, you're looking at guys like Cisco, Fortner, Muma, uh, Lloyd, Etienne, Walker, Lawrence, Ridley, taking that next step. So they're going to fill in for those 11 guys, but I think that's what you have to do. I really do. I mean, I really think that's... I mean, there's going to be some serious cuts. Like, the Jags are not in a great cap situation, and that's one of the reasons why I think Balky is in trouble. Uh, you know, if they don't win next year, they're in trouble. Like, they are they didn't, like, create this huge window of young players. They overspent on Cam Robinson. They spent a lot on on Kirk and Sheriff, you know, Aluakon. They're, if Calvin really is with this team more than one year, I mean, that's going to be a lot of money. I mean, he's getting $11 million on his previous contract. So there's money tied up. I mean, you're, if I'm forward thinking, and again, this is completely out of, out of the air, I would think guys like Fatu Kasi, Williams, Josh Allen are coming off the books in 2023, and that could save you a lot of money. Um, but, man, your window is not large. You need some production. You need to hit on some draft. That's what happens when you miss on draft picks. Let me try to get some of these comments here. Um, Gerald says, when I see this defense step on the field, I keep hearing Benny Hill theme music in the background. You youngsters won't get that. But Gerald, you're right. I, I don't get that. And I'm sorry. I wish I did. Uh, I'll, I'll look. You know, let's do it right now. Whatever. Benny Hill. We're 54 minutes in. If you're listening to the podcast, then you're missing out on me searching Benny Hill in Google uh, to see the theme here. Oh, man. Let's see here. Is this it? Yakety Sex? We have to listen. We have to watch an ad. Hey, Google, take a selfie. And here we go. I I I hope that's not what you were talking about. Um, I don't know if I have the the patience to watch the rest of that. Um, to be to be honest with you, but that we gave it a try. Shay says, uh, he's a channel member. He says, it seems we wasted the chance to have a team before paying Trevor. That's the thing is like, Shay brings up a good point. Like teams can maximize their window by paying players to, around their rookie contract deals. And Shay uh, and Trevor doesn't have much time on his rookie contract deal left. But I hope we sign him long-term. I love Trevor. Haney says, uh, Walker, Lloyd, and Dewey, three players on the roster that would greatly benefit from putting on 20 pounds and changing positions. Yeah, true. Easier said than done. Oh, yeah, Dewey's contract's up. That's right. I mean, if, if let's just go to the ad free agents here, right? So we're going to go to the free agents. And, like, are any of these guys guys that you want to keep? Like, Evan Ingram's the only one. Juwan Taylor, I'd love to keep Juwan Taylor. Let's take a look at Juwan Taylor. If we, let's say we... Let's say we signed Juwan Taylor. Where are we at here? $16 million? That's where we were before. All right, so what's Juwan Taylor? We have to type it in here. What's Juwan Taylor going to get um, per year? Is this per year? Cap, cap figure. I mean, if you sign Juwan Taylor, he's getting, we'll, we'll say conservative, $12 million. What does this have to say here? Uh, this is, yeah, this is 1.2. So twelve million. If you pay Juwan Taylor twelve million dollars a year, which I don't think that's you, you tag Juwan Taylor, you're still gonna be about twelve million. I mean, right tackles get paid. So if you pay him twelve million dollars, then you're you're left with only four point five million dollar uh, cap room. 
You escaped copyright police with the Benny Hill video. Ben, this is not my first time. This is not my first time. Um, so yeah, I don't think uh, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, let's say you get him back on like a team friendly discount. Let's say eight. You're still only eight million. Like I just don't. I, don't, I mean, unless you make some other moves and restructure some people, um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Joe in the chat says Ingram, another dude not worth the money. I like Evan Ingram. Like I do. And let's say you pay Evan Ingram seven million. You're at you're at nine nine point five million dollars in cap next year if you pay Evan Ingram seven million, and that's low end. I just we're in a bad cap situation, boys. We're in a bad cap situation. I mean, this is a cutting eleven people too. Is CJ expensive? CJ Bethard? <laughs> no, he's probably. I mean, but didn't they just didn't they just look at didn't they? Look at signing someone, like some quarterback from the CFL, then they try some quarterback out from the Canadian Football League. Um, right, you, are you going to sign Riley Patterson back? We even talk about Riley Patterson. Um, yeah, let's, let's give him a million, right? Yeah. 15.5 with Riley Patterson. What about Smoot? Shit, there's no way. There's no way. I mean... What what is Smoot gonna get? What is I mean realistically cheap cheap and I'm talking cheap. He gets what five million. That's cheap, man. And, I, and I'm saying like I think he could probably get more than that on the open market. Five million. We're at ten million, and that's that's not a lot to. I mean maybe that's a guy you do that with, but I mean if he's not getting the snaps now. I don't understand how he get the snaps next year. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know they tried to give Smoot and Key more snaps, but he hasn't really done much with the with the more snaps there. I don't know. We really let Balky have free reign with this team. Incomprehensible is one comment. Yeah. Joe in the comments says Taylor has given up more sacks than any other starting right tackle in the league. Let him go. He will get Trevor killed. So I think that's not fair just because I don't I think he's played well this year. Um, I mean if we look at I mean if we look at the if we look at the PFF on the on the season for the for the Jags. I mean, let's see here. Let's look at just the offense here. Do you want to oh yeah, not a great grade here. But it's not the it's not the the pass blocking that's been killing him. I mean, he's got a seventy four point seven pass blocking grade and a forty two point nine run blocking grade. So his run blocking grade has been the worst. But here's what stands out to me more than anything is he's played in almost every single snap. I mean, Fortner's played in five more snaps than him. So I mean, there's something to be said for durability. I don't think you can pay a guy. Twelve million dollars on durability. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, he's been he's been good. He's he's been okay. I mean, look, Cam Robinson's grade a little bit higher. Okay, Cam Robinson's at a sixty five point two, but that's a fifty three point two pass blocking grade, which is significantly worse than Juwan Taylor's, and a fifty six point five, which is a oh, pass blocking is seventy three. So his pass blocking grade has been better. Um, yeah. Marginally better, though. Not for the money he's getting paid. Not at all. Nathan, uh, this is Max Brown, says, uh, Nathan Rourke is who you're thinking of. As a college football, uh, as a Canadian football league fan, I can say he's pretty sick. Put up one of the best seasons. Um, only started 10 games as a 24-year-old rookie. I did see he was at some college. People were pretty hyped about him. C Breacher in the comments says that we sh never should have signed Darius Williams, Foye, Aluakon, Foley, or Griffin. Oh. Ben Haney says Kirk, Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, and Trevor being top three in PFF is very encouraging. Yeah, you're right. And number and tied for number three, Jamal Agnew. <laughs> oh, so there you go. 
Man, I, I don't know. I mean, Balky definitely put us in a situation um, that's not ideal. Joe in the comments points out that Juwan Taylor's only playing well because it's his contract year. Okay. That's fair. Listen, there's validity to that if you want to go that route. So I can't hate on you for that. Um, a lot of work to be done. I mean, there we're going to have to see some finessing of this roster and this cap space for the team to be competitive. I think next year you could be competitive next year with this roster, but that would be it. Unless you do some ser- unless you draft really well, these guys you drafted this year have to pan out. Um, they have to. Legend in the comments asked, "Does Caldwell get another year?" So. The report from Jason Lock and Fora saying that Caldwell's role could be changed has some merit to me to it, in my opinion. I think I would rather trust Doug Peterson. I love the Trevon Walker pick; just is criminal. It's absolutely criminal. I mean, you could have really gone any other direction. You could have gone Jamison Williams coming off a torn ACL, and I'd been happier than what we're getting out of Devin Lloyd. Obviously, he's he's could he be better? Yes, but. Uh, if he become listen, if he plays up to the number one player potential, then he will have made the biggest jump from year one to year two than any player I can remember in recent history. So hopefully it happens, but I'm not being too optimistic about it. Um, listen, I appreciate you guys being in the chat. This has been a fun show. I love I, mean, I love breaking down contracts. Uh, I love breaking down things like as much as I like breaking down film. I like talking all things Jags. So I do appreciate you guys being here. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get notifications. And if you already get notifications, subscribing just helps the YouTube channel get more people here. Uh, we're doing pretty well with subscribers, so I, that's a testament to you guys. I always say tell a friend. If you have a Jags friend, uh, spread the word. Um, tell them that uh, we talk Jags. I do interject my opinion sometimes, but um, I like to hear from you guys more. Uh, the comments are rolling in right now. Um, Juan Carthurus Jr. says, I think Lloyd will be fine. He was a baller earlier this season. Yeah, I, I hope so. Like I said, rookie wall could be real. Shea, who is a valued channel member, says, so all we need is Bulky to draft super well, be smart with who he pays, and bring in some bargain free agents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Shay, I think that sums it up very nicely. Shay also says in the comments to get some likes on this video. So if you're listening to the podcast, you can't like it, but you can share it with your friend. Go ahead and hit the share button. Text it to a buddy who's a Jags fan. If you are watching the YouTube video, hit the thumbs up button. Um, could you do a mock draft real quick? Blaster models, I appreciate it. I, I, I usually go about an hour show. Um, I, I'll do plenty of mock drafts coming up. Um, so don't worry. Um People bringing up stats for uh, the the rookies. Listen, everyone has their own path in the NFL. I'm still hoping for uh, for Trevon to do it. Hey, thank you guys that are here in the chat again one more time. Thank you to the uh, channel members. We even had people sign up for channel members. I know Nolly Full Cap hit 14 months as a channel member during this show, which I really appreciate. Um, we had, um, cardiac cats became a Trevor Lawrence level channel member. So I appreciate that a lot, guys. I really, really love you guys. Um, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. I love talking with you guys all during the week. Um, be looking for this show to be on, uh, Spotify and all other podcast, uh, uh, mediums and make sure to subscribe to the podcast. That'll help us out for all those things. Hey, listen, love talking to you guys. Can't wait till Friday night show. And until 